It was on God. When we pray, is our focus on ourselves? It's easy sometimes to focus on ourselves when we're hurting. It's easy to focus on ourselves when we're in economic pain or emotional pain. But Hezekiah's focus was not on himself. His focus was on the one who could do something about his condition. That wasn't Hezekiah. It was God. And God heard that prayer. And God answered that prayer. And he took revenge upon the Assyrians. Now, what happened to the king, the other king, Sennacherib? Listen to the last part of this. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed, <laughs> and he returned home along the same route, because that's what God had prophesied, along the same route, and he lived in Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he worshipped in the house of uh, Nishrach, that's his god, small g-o-d, that uh, Adremelech and Sherezar killed him. Now, in Isaiah... If you read the passage in Isaiah 35 and 36, it'll tell you that was, those were his sons. His own sons killed him. They killed him with a sword. And then they escaped to the land of Ararat. Heard of that before, right? Where do we hear about that? Something to do with the big, uh, big ship, right? That's right, Noah. That's exactly right. And Eshardon, his other son, became king in his place. Wow. When God deals with an enemy, does he not know how to deal with an enemy? The same is true for the little enemies in your life. They may seem big. They may seem like Sennacherib and a big army. But God can deal with them in the same way because he's the same God. For God's children, prayer is always access to victory. Now, that doesn't mean access to get things like I want them. That's not his promise. But access to true spiritual victory through God. Prayer is the answer. Now, very quickly, I want us to turn over to chapter 20. Same king, first seven verses. The prayer of a righteous man, remember, is very powerful. There's benefit to living for God. If you don't believe that, listen to this story. In those days, Hezekiah, verse, uh, chapter, uh, verse 1 of chapter 20, in those days, Hezekiah became mortally ill. That means he's fixing to die. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said, Thus says the Lord, get things ready, set your house in order, for you're going to die and not live. Now, <laughs> that's interesting. You're going to die and not live. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to die that's what he was saying Okay, you're going to die this is, this is the end get your will in order get your house in order I'm giving you advance notice this is going to happen to you this is your appointed time that's what he was saying Okay. and then in verse 2 he he here is King Hezekiah he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord saying Remember now, O Lord, I beseech you how I have walked before you in truth and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Now, he was king, but he cried. That's okay. It's okay to cry. In the midst of pain, in the midst of pressure, it's okay to cry. That's all right. The king did. All right? But look what he said. I've walked before you. He didn't say I've lived a perfect life. He just said I've walked before you. That means I've tried to live a godly life. That was my paraphrase of what I believe he meant by that. I've walked before thee in truth, all right, and with a whole heart. In other words, <clears throat> when we worship God, we should worship him wholeheartedly, not half-heartedly. He doesn't like half-hearted worship. He doesn't like half-hearted living for him. He likes wholehearted, surrender, as the song said. Surrender to him, walking with him wholeheartedly. Doesn't mean perfect. Doesn't mean sinless. It means our 
Surrender of ourselves. I give up my life. I give it over to you. I belong to you. That's what we say to him. He gave us our, his spirit. But I, we belong to him. What a prayer. I've done what is good in thy sight. The best I understand what your word teaches, I've tried to do good in your eyes before you. In other words, according to your teaching. That's what he said. And God sees everything, does he not? So God knows. All right? I want to tell you, when it comes a major trial in your life, major difficulty comes in your life, you need to be living a holy life for God because there's power in living a holy life for God. Much power. Listen to what happened. And it came about before Isaiah had gone out of the middle court. He hadn't even left the king's palace. He got a word from God. The word of the Lord came to him saying, Return and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus says the Lord your father, uh, Lord God of your father David. Now, every good king in Israel was a son of David. It may have been 25 generations later, but they were sons of David. That's just the way the scripture reads. Uh, because David was a good king, all right? I have heard your prayer, and I've seen your tears, and behold, I will heal you. He's a God of healing. Now, that doesn't just apply to physical healing. It does apply to that, but not just to physical healing. Other types of healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. We talked about this morning, a person who can be born again and yet fall for a brief time into sin again. And they can be restored in fellowship to the Lord. God is a God of healing, of all kinds of healing. 